So, uh, once we get the coal bed really hot, and like I said, we're gonna wait till it's dark for this just so that you can see all the temperatures and everything, um, we're going to um, put the knife into the fire. I really like to use a vice grips to hold on to the knife, and that's kind of a cheap vice grips is best because you're just gonna leave it on there. Um, I like to use one that doesn't have any kind of plastic or, or rubber handle because it will melt the vice grips. Um, anyway, we clip the vice grips onto the knife. We're going to put the knife here in the fire. With, with O1, we only need to get it to 1500 degrees, so usually you can get it up that hot here on top and not have to really bury it in the coals. Um, if you bury it in the coals, one of the challenges is, is that you kind of lose track of being able to see the knife and you really want to be able to see the tip of the knife because the tip of the knife is going to heat up a lot faster and I've had this happen before where um, we're heat treating a knife um, and we've melted the tip off because the tip has gotten way hotter than the rest of the the rest of the knife so um, you want to be able to see the whole thing it's better if you can kind of get it on top if you have to nestle it in the coals kind of nestle it in a little bit or maybe put get a couple of coals around it with a stick or something but try not to just completely bury it in there it's gonna be really hard for you to see what temperature it is so once we get it up to that that really uh, like the salmon red cherry red to salmon red before it gets orange um, we're gonna keep try and keep it at that temperature for a couple minutes and after we after we get done with that we're gonna um, we're gonna actually use a magnet to test to see if it's heat treated. So um, O1 steel demagnetizes at around 1500 degrees. So I, it's not exactly 1500 degrees, but pretty close. I think it's like 1450 or something. So right now you can see that this magnet attaches itself to the steel. Um, when it heats up to 1500 degrees, this magnet will just, it won't, be a, it won't magnetize to the steel anymore. So it'll be the same as just trying to magnetize with this box of matches, you know? Um, it won't stick to it, right? So I'm gonna keep this magnet right here and right before I'm ready to quench the blade I'm going to pick up the knife take the magnet check it uh, make sure that it doesn't mag it's not magnetized and then We're gonna come over here and we're gonna quench um, The blade in some oil right here. So the oil that we're gonna be using to quench is um, just cooking oil, but really you can use motor oil you can you know recycle the old motor oil you can use all kinds of pretty much any kind of oil you could use your super expensive olive oil if you want um though i wouldn't recommend it um but we're just going to use cheap like corn oil um i often if you're going to sand the knife i recommend that you use cleaner oil just because sometimes um, some of the particles in the oil can kind of embed themselves in the knife um, if you're not going to sand it, like we're not going to sand this knife, we're just going to leave it rustic looking. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, but, you know, this kind of cooking oil is super cheap, you know, just like whatever kind of cheap fry oil you're going to use. Um, this is just a glass vase. You do not want to use plastic because um, it might melt. So um, a glass vase, you can see it's seen better days. Um, we're going to pour the oil in here. And then when we quench the knife, um, it's really important that we stick the knife straight down, okay? Because if we put the knife in at an angle, what's gonna happen is the underside is gonna hit the oil first and it's gonna cool faster than the, the top side here. And what that can cause is it can cause the knife to, to bend, okay? So you don't wanna end up with a bent knife, you wanna end up with a straight knife. So um, you wanna really take a lot of care to put the knife in straight. Now, you don't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna go pretty straight down in the oil. So we're gonna come, and I actually like to practice this before um, before it's time, just so that you you have everything where you want it. You know, so for example, I'm crossing over my body, so I'll probably put the oil quench over here, just because doing that seemed a little bit weird to me. Um, so I'm gonna be wearing these gloves. So the knife is in the fire. We get it up to temperature. Um, I guess I should have the magnet over here. See, these are the things that you want to think about in advance. So I'm gonna pull the knife out with my right hand, check the magnetization, um, quickly turn it over, and then quench it. And when I put it in the quench, it may flame up. Um, obviously we have gloves on, so it's not a big deal, but it may flame up, it may not. Um, and then when you get it in the quench, um, you can just kind of start swirling it around, and if you can dip it and swirl it, and just kind of, you wanna cool the knife quickly, um, but because it's oil and not water, it's actually gonna cool it slightly slower than if it was water. So um, it's different types of steel like different types of quench. In fact, um, 
some types of steel like D2 um, is an air quench steel. So you might pull, if you're using D2, you might pull it out and then you're just waving it through the air to cool it in the air. O1 likes oil quench. So if you're using a different type of steel than O1 for your project, then you just want to research that steel. You want to know what temperature you need to get it up to, what color that temperature is, what kind of quench you need to do, and all the stuff about that steel. So we're just mainly talking about O1 now. And it's I recommend O1 for for all of you guys for starting out knife making. It has a pretty low heat treating temperature at 1500 degrees. It's pretty easy to work with. It really makes a really quality knife. And so I don't see any reason for you to try a much more difficult steel like 154 CM or D2 or something like that um, until you get more experienced, okay? To come up with a stoke for your fire. I mean, there's other expensive ways to do it, but we're talking backyard you know, making a knife in your backyard here. So um, great, just go to the, Probably don't use your wife's hair dryer. Probably go to the um, thrift store and get yourself one.